And we are back with the fourth segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this fourth segment, we are going to be talking about who the Lakers' new coach is going to be. And the person who is in the front runner to take that new coaching role is J.J. Redick. So, <clears throat> if you guys been keeping up with um, the podcast, a few months ago... I mentioned how LeBron and J.J. Redick were starting a podcast together where they talked nothing but basketball and how it was going to be such a very like intense conversation due to the high IQ that both of those players have. And after a while, you know, that has gained a lot of traction. And Ever since then, they've just been talking nothing but basketball, and it's very, very intelligent. Like, you can tell that J.J. Redick has a high IQ in basketball, and you can tell that LeBron, you can obviously tell that LeBron has such a high IQ in basketball as well. And due to them being so close with each other, and them being like buddy-buddy, it wouldn't be surprised if the Lakers decide to get him as the new head coach. So... After months after they started their podcast, Darvin Ham got fired, and there's really no surprise that Darvin Ham was going to get fired. He was a horrible head coach. He was horrible with the rotations. He was horrible with the plays. He was just terrible. Everything about Darvin Ham was terrible, and it, it's really like it's not surprising. I mean, LeBron cooked him when he, Darvin Ham used to play basketball, so it's really not surprising that Darvin Ham's IQ is not on par with LeBron. Simple as that. And I'm sorry for trashing on Darvin Ham, but it's that simple. He's a horrible coach. Horrible. Almost as bad as Steve Nash. But regardless, since LeBron and J.J. Redick have a really close relationship, now there is um, rumors that J.J. Redick is going to assume the role as the Lakers head coach and replace Darvin Ham. Which wouldn't be surprising, seeing as LeBron and J.J. Redick, they do see eye to eye in some points when you listen to their podcasts. And they do seem to have a very big brain for basketball. Paul Pierce, however, he has his doubts. Of course he has his doubts. I mean, if you listen to Paul Pierce, it seems that the only reason why he exists now is to hate on LeBron. And I know that sounds harsh for me to say, but that's all he does. And I'm sorry, Paul Pierce, but you're never going to be better than LeBron, no matter how badly you want him to be. And LeBron is better than you. It's that simple. And he just can't, he just can't stand to hear that. He cannot stand the thought that LeBron is just better than him. And he cannot stand the fact that LeBron has dominated him throughout the entirety of his career and is still dominating in the NBA. So he's a certified hater. I'm sorry to say it. He is a certified hater. And Kevin Garnett even called him out for his for his hating. He was like at one point when Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce were on the were on the podcast and like um were on their own podcast on their own show. Kevin Garnett was talking to Paul Pierce like he would dog you. You know he would dog you. It doesn't matter how old he is. He would dog both of us. And because Kevin Garnett, he has incredible respect for LeBron James as opposed to. Paul Pierce, who has literally zero respect for LeBron James, which is very disappointing coming in from Paul Pierce. Like, you, I understand that, like, you're going to be butthurt about LeBron just owning you in every single playoff series and LeBron making you his Eastern Conference doormat throughout the entirety of your career. But regardless, it's like, you got to put respect where respect is due. And he's just butthurt at this point. So... The quote that he had was, you hear J.J. Redick on podcasts, they draw up plays, it sounds like he has a great IQ, like he has a great voice for coaching, it's like an Instagram model, it looks good all on there, and then you see it in person, it ain't what you think. That's what he had to say about J.J. Redick and the possibility of him being the coach, and like it's an unconven it's a very unconventional way to make his points but there are arguments for that like i'm not going to sit here and say that that's not entirely true because again coaching basketball and talking basketball are two completely different things so 
no inter- there's no telling just how good J.J. Redick is going to be as the new Lakers head coach, if he's even appointed as the new Lakers head coach. Like, we still have no idea whether or not he's going to even be the head coach for the Lakers. Like, it's just a very, very high chance given his relationship with LeBron on the podcast. And it's really like, I mean, again, not entirely sure how it's going to play out because it could, he could be selected, but at the same time, he could also not be selected. And I wouldn't be surprised about either of them. And if anything, he would be selected due to the connection that he has with LeBron James and just how they talk basketball together because whatever JJ is gonna, whatever JJ says chances are LeBron is going to like agree with that like without a problem and whatever LeBron says JJ is most likely going to agree with that without a problem not only that but Redick has also um he also has pretty good experience as a player being a role player understanding rotations and everything else in between so I don't think it's anything like Paul Pierce's analogy. I actually am pretty optimistic about him being the coach. But then again, I sort of have to, like, I do have to think it through. Because, like, while I am optimistic, I'm also a little pessimistic due to the fact that Steve Nash was also a very good player um, when he was in the NBA. He was a very smart player. And he was also a, like, he was a very good point guard, very smart player, high IQ. But as a coach, he was not that good. He was a very bad coach. And, like, his coaching schemes when he was on Brooklyn was give KD, give Kyrie, or give James Harden the ball. Everyone get out the way and do something. Like, that was basically what the offense looked like when he was on the Brooklyn, when he was the Brooklyn Nets' coach. And it somewhat hurt the it somewhat hurted the team later on in their years. Like when Kyrie and Kevin Durant were the only ones left, and they were playing against the Boston Celtics in the in the playoff series that they rematched in in the first round. They were bad. They were absolutely horrible because again, the offense was just give Kyrie and Kevin Durant the ball and see what they can do. Everyone else get out the way. They did that in and in game two they were horrible they were that was probably the worst game i've ever seen from either of those players and it's the and then steve nash was shortly fired right after so again wouldn't be surprised if this sort of backfires for the lakers in the sense that um jj reddick isn't going to be the head coach that everyone thought he was going to be like I'm I'm a little bit I'm a little optimistic just because you know JJ Reddick seems to know what he's talking about but again pessimistic because coaching and talking basketball two completely different things and as a player completely different than being a coach so still weighing my options there and I'm not entirely sure exactly how good of a coach he's going to be and speaking of good coaches Doc Rivers had something to say about JJ Reddick's comments towards Doc not taking accountability. He said, JJ Reddick has had his best years under one coach, and you're looking right at him. And honestly, that's pretty savage coming from Doc, but regardless, I mean, that's just uh, like, no. It wasn't because it was it wasn't because of you, Doc. It was because of the amazing team on the Clippers that you guys had. It was because of Chris Paul being an elite playmaker. It was because of DeAndre Jordan being a great center and Blake Griffin being a great power forward. That's the reason why J.J. Redick was able to perform under that offense with the playmaking of Chris Paul. Because Chris Paul, he has eyes behind his back. He has the biggest brain ever with basketball. He's one of the greatest point guards to ever live. And the only downside to him is just playoff performances. And... That, like, again, that's really the only downside. Aside from that, he should be in the talking as being a top five point guard ever in the NBA. And when you have that talent, of course there's going to be, um, of course your team is going to play better. Because that's what Chris Paul does. In the At least when he was in his prime, Chris Paul made everyone else around him better. And with J.J. Redick on the team as a shooter... How could you not make him better? You just, all you got to do is give him the ball when he flares off a screen, and he's going to shoot that. Like, it's that simple. 
And again, like obviously, like you know, it's not entirely that simple, but that's more or less the plays that they would run with JJ Redick, him running off the ball and catching the ball and shooting it right out of the gate. Like that was and that's what he was really good at. Not to mention him his catch and shooting ability. Like he could stand in one spot and get ready to shoot the ball, but no one was gonna leave him open. Like it's that simple. So that's all that I have to say about JJ Redick and the possibilities of him being the new coach. And Paul Pierce's comments. Again, Paul Pierce is just butthurt that LeBron is better than him and LeBron is still playing and he's just on the bench and in his home on Undisputed, wherever it is that he is. And just, he's just trying to, he's just hating to hate. That's sim- that's all it is. I am not a big fan of Paul Pierce simply because of the type of person that he is and the type of person that he's become in retirement. Like, I'd expect these retired players to have some sort of respect for a lot of these new coming players as well as players that have beaten them several times but they're just immature and they're really butthurt about the fact that they lost and it's just it, it infuriates me because it's like how old are you how old are you that you're still upset about it let it go but that's all i gotta say about that segment about this fourth segment so now we will go ahead and go into the fifth segment where I have some very, very sad news about the TNT crew in um, between, you know, Shaq, Chuck, Kenny the Jet Smith, and Ernie. So stay tuned for this really sad news. It's going to be a rather shorter segment than the rest of them, so just stay tuned because it's not good news. <laughs> 